All right, hey guys. So we've been using uh, Ableton, playing around with uh, utilizing it as an OSC controller for X32. Uh, and the reason I had wanted to do this was for synchronized uh, time-based effects, things like crossfades and so forth. Uh, but more interesting than that, when we can do some sort of complex uh, EQ things and uh, fainter movements and uh, timed bus sends and kills and all those types of things. Um, that that make for a really interesting sound design and live show uh, sort of parameters while also controlling lights. Um, so what I've done is in one of my previous videos I did show you uh, s my Vegas mode um, thing that I had set up. So um, oh, that's the wrong thing. Um, here we go. So over here on my fader bank here I had set up uh, faders 1 through 8, 9 through 16 and then my DCAs are all being controlled by some uh, fader automation that is happening on a clip uh, automation parameter that is affecting that, that is being mapped to that OSC value. Uh, same thing for my, so I've got fader automation, DCA automation. I'll probably leave that the same, but I, I believe that I've found uh, a more convenient uh, method for sort of controlling all of these things for things like FX parameters. So you'll see that um, previously um, on the fader automation, um, we did map those controls to this EQ8. Um, and this is useful for things like the um, a, a channel, for instance, if I want to do a lot of different things on a channel that are automated, then um, I can map all of these parameters to output messages that are going to X32. Way more useful than just having like a fader and a couple of pan things. Um, so then under here, uh, today I've been playing around with FX triggers. Uh, and what I've been able to do uh, is to sort of evolve the way that I'm looking at this. So um, still we have our OSC send device. And what I've done here is we've got my FX returns, right? So typically if I come over here to X32, on most shows I've got um, a doubler, a plate, a haul, a delay. Um, and I can really um, eke out most of the f the effects that I'm I'm trying to elicit using those four things um, for most uh, situations. Um, usually, I, I, I treat this sort of effects one as a variable device, but then that plate hall uh, delay all sort of stay the same. Uh, so what I've done here is um, I've got these these return paths. These actually both of the FX parameters and the returns are mapped here. So I've got the return faders mapped to these faders. Um, and then I have actually the device, uh, for instance, the doubler um, is has been mapped to these macro devices um, in each. So you'll see I've got part one and part two, um, and that gives me all these macro knobs that I can rename. Um, and then part one, uh, if we come over here, I've got this OSC send device, which has uh, eight messages, which nicely corresponds to my EQ8. I can use these frequency knobs and map each one of those to one of these eight parameters um, and then assign those um, to these macro knobs. Uh, and then I can rename those macro knobs to the things that actually correspond with the device. Um, so very useful there. Now you'll notice on this side, this is the second uh, part of the OSC messages because I, I do need more than eight. Uh, that I have used the second send uh, to map to the fader there. So we can see that if I come over here to X32, uh, and let's, uh, let's make this smaller so we can really get there. Uh, if I come over here to my doubler and I move this guy around, uh, you can see that that fader moves with Ableton. Now note that this never goes over zero. Um, and I did that as a purposeful idiot proof thing um, so that I don't do something dumb. Um, you can limit your max value and your minimum value, incidentally. Um, and so 75% equates to 0 dB uh, FS on X32. So that's typically where I've, I've done those fader movements uh, when mapping to a fader, so I can't accidentally do something stupid. Uh, so now that I've got those things mapped, um, and this is really cool. I can come over here to, and I'm just going to collapse this because we don't actually need to look at that anymore. Um, I I'm going to come over here to my Ableton session um, and 
and I can come over here to my doubler and I can move my speed knob. It affects my speed width, so on and so forth. Every one of these knobs um, is mapped one to one to every one of these things within the X32. Very, very useful. Um, so I can I can control all of those things within any automatable parameter in Ableton. Um, and where that gets squirrely though um, is when you're dealing with uh, delays that are syncing to a particular tempo. Now I can come in here and I can tap this tempo and I can make this real fast or real slow um, and you can see that this time adjusts but I cannot map this tap parameter to uh, an output thing in Ableton very easily. Um, so what I've done is rather than trying, uh, well I tried a bunch of things and uh, then I realized that the solution is actually quite simple. Um, if I come over here to my delay automation channel, you can see that I've actually got this mapped to song tempo. So uh, I've got this FX4 parameter 2, which corresponds to the time value, uh, is being mapped to this value right here, which is 120 beats per minute. So you'll note that if I hit uh, if I hit my go button in Ableton, so let's just let's just hit go. So now I'm sending out uh, uh, tempo values over this OSC channel. If I come over here to my stereo delay, uh, this should theoretically have moved. There we go. Um, now let's adjust this curve because I think this got a little bit screwed up there. So I should see what I should see is as I'm adjusting this tempo, there we go. As I'm adjusting this tempo, oh, you know why? It's because Ableton didn't send out a, uh, hey, this this tempo message. So for instance, uh, let's try uh, 130 BPM and 120 BPM. So, no, not 1200. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so we can see the, that as I adjust the tempo parameter within Ableton, uh, this knob, this time knob is actually shifting. Um, and I can adjust this dynamically. Um, and this with this uh, time value will always lock. So if you need divisions from within that beat, for instance, I've got it set one to one, so you're going to get quarter notes out of that, but you can adjust these, these left and right factor accordingly, uh, however you need it to, d to be. Um, and I can come in here and I can actually confirm that um, my time value here is matching up with Ableton uh, because uh, a half a second is going to equal 120 beats per minute, or 500 milliseconds, however you want to look at that. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. I have been successfully able to uh, synchronize um, tap tempo to FX parameters within uh, uh, X32. Obviously, you could you could map that to any number of things. For instance, if you were doing you know multi-tap delays, um, or if I was using this tap function within the, the stereo chorus, basically any time domain thing that you really want to synchronize. Uh, I might even play around with seeing if I can get it to lock to like pre-delay on the plate reverb, um, which is really useful when you have sort of that musical timing that's locked into your session. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to start playing around with some automation of these parameters, uh, doing some uh, bus send, uh, for instance, the, the send thing that I was talking about, so s sending something to delay, killing it, cranking the feedback, doing an uh, 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 EQ sweep, uh, and then bringing everything back to normal. Um, I hope this has been somewhat useful for you, and uh, really excited to see where this goes next.